this is Hempfield Happy. A long tradition at Hempfield, prom. Brendan McLaughlin went to check it out. I am here at the Eden Resort where an exciting event is taking place. Most high schoolers look forward to this, and that is prom. This year we held prom at the Eden Resort. There are about 430 students in attendance. The prom is planned by steering committee. Um, it's made up of students and meets about two or three times a month. For food this year, we had a buffet, which everyone seemed to love. Um, the food was freaking amazing, and the DJ did an awesome job. I like the dancing. Uh, my favorite thing about prom was definitely dancing and having a good time with all my senior friends. I liked all the dancing. Um, I really liked all the flowers on the table. They're really pretty, and I liked the dancing. Um, I loved the whole environment. I loved that it was at the Eden. I thought it was a really beautiful like setting. I loved the food, and the dancing was so much fun. The DJ was great, and the photo booths were so fun. Just everything about it was perfect, and it was definitely a night to remember. I always love going to prom every year, getting to see uh, our students show up and they all look their best, they're acting their best, and it's definitely a culminating experience for high school. Um, you know, we spend all this time every day uh, with the kids in the building and it's just awesome to get to see them outside of the building, putting all the lessons that, th that they've learned in school and in life uh, into good use. Everyone, best behavior, best manners, and everyone's having such a great time. It's an enjoyable experience to see our kids having fun and getting ready to head off into the world. After prom, Hebfield students attended post-prom. I talked with the advisor about why they hold the event. Post-prom is, the main reason is because it's a drug and alcohol free event for the students to, to attend and it is for juniors and seniors, sometimes that kind of gets lost, but um, to attend after the prom to keep them safe, keep them you know, out of trouble for lack of a better word and hopefully you know in a safe environment where we know that they're going to get home safe. For this year, a um, couple different things, a couple of the same things from last year. We had a mechanical bowl, we had something called the red baller which was a big inflatable thing that kind of was like the wipeout that you see on TV. Um, we had tennis, we had karaoke, which was very popular this year, um, basketball, things like that. Swimming was a big option, too, that they had. Overall, the night of prom was a big success. For Hempfield Happenings, I'm Brendan McLaughlin. Now over to Chloe Raskow, who's talking to one of our retirees that's been in the district the longest. Good evening, I'm Chloe, and I'm here with Mr. Richter, who's one of the many teachers that are retiring after the spring semester here at Hempfield High School. So thank you so much for joining me today. <laughs> thank you for inviting me, Chloe. It's great to be here. Yeah. All right, so first off, how many years have you taught at the school district in general? Okay, well, I started in 1978, right out of college. Uh, I graduated from Westminster College and came to Hempfield School District as an elementary art teacher at Mountville Elementary School. Uh, I was there for 30 years, and then six years ago, I had the opportunity to move to the high school, and I thought it would be a great way to end my career, try something new and different, and I'm certainly glad I did. I'm glad you came to the high school. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Has it been the same subject every single semester? Yeah. Yeah, I came on board as the Fundamentals of Design teacher, which is a prerequisite course, and I have the majority of those classes. I feel kind of like the cruise director or the tour director welcoming people into the department and maybe helping them feel comfortable in the department and then deciding where they want to go on from there. Do you have any like really fun memories that you'd like to share? Uh, the memories are, are many and uh, it's been an overwhelming experience both in elementary and again here in the high school and as I reflect upon my career at Hemfield um, I can't think of anything more rewarding than the opportunity to work with Hempfield students, both in the elementary and the high school. Certainly uh, an exciting moment for the department was when Jake Longenecker's uh, tape sculpture two years ago uh, won first place in the United States and uh, put Jake on the map, Hempfield on the map, and that was certainly a, a memory that I'll never forget. And just day to day, every, every, every day something new has happened that, that hopefully I can take with me and remember forever. Yeah, uh, that was an amazing sculpture. I remember <laughs> that from last year. It was all tape. That was, that was incredible. Mm -hmm. Have you taught fibers at all? No. No? no. Okay. So that That's was just Mr. Layman's. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I wasn't sure. I know you popped in sometimes yeah, in fibers always. class. <laughs> <All right>. Well, <laughs> I've liked to walk around the department. One of the, the great things about being in the high school is the opportunity to work with five other fantastic teachers. Uh, in elementary school, when you're the art teacher, you're just 
uh, you know, you're the only one. So you really don't have other art teachers to, to play things off and, and um, the camaraderie element isn't there. But uh, you here at the high school, the opportunity to work with five other art teachers has been a tremendous way to finish my career as well. <laughs> and so what are your plans for next year? Well, I'm going to be around. Uh, Hemfield has always been a huge part of my life, and I cannot uh, pull the cord totally. I am so proud of the many, many things that Hemfield students do athletically, artistically, performance. Uh, I know that I will be around and be following students in, in those endeavors even as I retire. Uh, I have a lot planned. I love to travel. I love to work on my home. I'm an avid gardener. I like to work out. Um, I like to put on a hat and vest once in a while and dance to music. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm going to be busy, and uh, it's, it's going to be the next chapter. I only hope that whatever I do next will be as rewarding, fulfilling, and enlightening as, as my years here at Hemfield. Well, you will certainly be missed here <laughs> at Hemfield, yeah. and thank you so much for joining me. It's my and pleasure. we wish you the best of luck. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Mr. Richter isn't the only one that's retiring. Four more teachers are also finishing up their last semester here at the high school. I got a chance to speak with them about the memories they have made throughout the years. One year in Spanish 2, before we went to the block and we had a little more time, we had a chapter in February um, where they were talking about certain characteristics. And um, I turned into the love fairy and we matched up students in class, they found their ideal partner. And I actually put on a blue tutu and a tiara and had a wand and found everyone their perfect match. I started teaching uh, calculus, AP calculus, okay, I, it, that, that was my favorite part because I got to meet with, work with the, the best and brightest students at Hemfield and working with them and seeing the challenges and, and just seeing how they progress throughout the, the year. Uh, it's just been really very rewarding to see how they've managed a very tough course like that, a very challenging, very uh, rigorous course, and how some of them struggle, but how they persevere. I've really liked all the people I've met through the years. That, that's for me. That's going to be the hardest part about leaving here is leaving all the people behind. <laughs> My favorite memory of Hempfield would be an in-service day where we traveled to Inner Harbor and we got to travel through or go through a science museum uh, with teachers and we just had a great day on the water down there in Baltimore. We thank you for all your hard work and dedication to the school. For Hemfield Happenings, I'm Chloe Rice Cowell. Good evening. I'm Will Stout, principal of Hemfield High School, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to this evening's commencement program for the class of 2014. We are gathered here tonight in a formal ceremony to celebrate this significant milestone in the lives of these young men and women. It is with great pride that I stand before you this evening as your principal and am afforded the opportunity to share my thoughts as you prepare to graduate this evening. How quickly time flies. It was only four short years ago that you sat in the Performing Arts Center as timid freshmen and we welcomed you as new Hemfield High School students. I finally recall telling you to make the most of your time and the opportunities available to you at Hemfield because this day, graduation, would be here before you know it. Well, I hate to say I told you so, but principals like to gloat when they are right, just like parents do. So let me remind you that I did tell you so. What I am most impressed about this class is how much you care for each other and how much you care for others. The philanthropic efforts of this class are just beyond belief. Our mini-thon raised over $121,000 to fight childhood <laughs> cancer. We sponsored Make-A-Wish Family, and we also helped out the Hempfield Food Pantry, just to name a few. And I made this uh, probably a, a mistake a couple years ago when I sang a few verses for one class. 
and I wasn't going to do it last year, and they said, oh no, you have to, we're counting on it. And then my communication specialist had this brilliant idea to put it on the website with hashtag Ask Brenda. So of course you had to respond with one of the most difficult songs to sing. So class of 2014, this is for you. Let you go, let you go, can't hold you back anymore. Let you go, let you go, it's time to see what's in store. As you find your way and make your mark, remember this, you will always be in our hearts. Congratulations, class of 2014. Hemfield is a relatively small community compared to the larger world. And after today, we are going to have no choice but to leave Hemfield and step into places that are bigger than we are and unfamiliar to us. There are not going to be any more flex teachers encouraging us to get a head start on their homework. No more hallway passes to keep us on track on where we are going. Starting on June 5th, what we do or don't do is all on us. If we keep love in our hearts and a desire to meet and understand new people, we'll be doing our part to shape a world that is less volatile and a safer place for all of us to write our own stories. I look forward to hearing your stories in the future, not as classmates, but as fellow Hempfield High School alumni. To all of you, peace. I am honored to call myself a member of a class that has demonstrated limitless compassion and love, even when we all felt lost in the face of horrible circumstances. We never know how many pages we will get a chance to fill before our time may be cut short. That is why it is paramount that we fill each page of our story with memories and moments so that when our time does come, the blank pages we did not reach are not filled with regrets. You are ready. We, we are ready. Are our parents ready? Of course not, we're their babies. And the rest of the world? Well, they better get ready. Take hold of your life and write. I have another challenge for you. I challenge you to write. Not the best story anyone has ever read. Not even the best story you have ever read, but the best story that you could have lived. Thank you and congratulations, class of 2014. The future, I believe, is up to you. The opportunities are almost unlimited. In today's world, if it can be imagined, it usually can be done by those with the vision and desire to achieve their dream. I think your future is what you want it to be and are committed to getting done. Will it require hard work? Yes. Will you always succeed? No. But you will learn from your mistakes and be stronger and wiser for having tried. We have the ability to decide who we can, be, who we can become because we are the individuals who hold the pen above the paper. Look around you. I'm sure there is at least one person who has decided to flip the page and is ready to begin writing. So referring back to Shakespeare, I believe Polonius says it best in Hamlet that an individual must be true to thine own self. This is true in high school and in life. High school is just the beginning, the prologue of the novel of our existence that belongs to the literary canon that is life. As we graduate, we prepare for the next chapter in our lives. From my high school experience, I've learned that taking a risk and following my heart has helped me to author my own life story, and I hope that all of you will be inspired to do the same. I cannot wait to read about all the exciting new literature that is bound to hit the shelves. Of course, no matter how vast your library, you are still the only author of your story. If you simply imitate others, all you will write is an anthology of other people's lives. No one wants a copy or a retread. Write the story that only you can write. Write a story that you can proudly sign your name to because, whether you like it or not, your story will end up in other people's libraries. Your friends, coworkers, family members, and even complete strangers will look to you for guidance. Use what you have read and create an exemplary and original volume that will be a valuable addition not just to Hemfield's library, but to humanities as well. So, Hemfield, I'm sorry, but I have one last homework assignment for you. Create your own reading list, 
not just for the summer, but for your entire life. In time, it will grow to be your library. And don't just read the bestsellers. Read the books that are meaningful to you, because it's the stories you read and the people you learn from that will shape your life. To be the author of your own story, you must first be the reader of your own books. Congratulations, class of 2014. Good luck, and just remember, never stop reading. Thank you. Juan Luis Veras Hernandez. Abigail Elaine Lehman. Emily Ann Maris. Andrew Joseph Hancock. Bren Hensgen. Sarah Ann Geisler. So as I close out my thoughts on how the class of 2014 might fulfill our theme, I leave you with, first, the story of the wise man and the starfish, which teaches us to lead a life of purpose. And second, we have the story of the Greek fisherman, where we learn that we should be the author of our own story, focused on what makes us authentically happy. Hempfield has set us up for a successful future. We spent the last four years exploring what drives each and every one of us athletics, academia, philanthropy, and the arts with the guidance of countless caring staff members. I think we can all say that we are leaving Hemfield with a little more knowledge of self than when we arrived. Thank you, Hemfield, for developing our interests, nurturing our dreams, and in turn, creating our stories. Thank you. On the, count, on the count of three, we'll switch our tassels from the right side of our caps to the left, and when we do so, we'll finally be graduates of the Hemfield High School's class of 2014. One, two, three. Hello, I'm Matt Bender, teacher of the Communications Technology classes here at Hemfield High School. For the remainder of this show, as well as our September show, we are going to have a conversation with our outgoing senior class. Since this is my fourth year in this program, this is a special group to me as it's the first group of students I've taught from their freshman year. Mrs. Zimmerman, our Director of Communications, is here to talk with two of our current Hemfield Happening seniors. I'm Shannon Zimmerman, and I'm here with Kayla McCoy and Chloe Reist Cal. Thanks for your work on Hemfield Happenings. When did you start and how many classes did you take in the ComTech program? Well, I started my sophomore year and I took um, ComTech 1 in the fall. And then I waited another year because I wasn't sure if that was what I was wanted to do. And then I took, I ended up taking ComTech 2 in the spring of my junior year. And now I'm taking 3 and 4 my senior year this year, so. Great. Mm -hmm. And you, Kayla? Um, I started as a junior in Comtech 1, and then this year I took Comtech 2, and then at last minute I switched to Comtech 3. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. And, Chloe, what was your favorite thing about Comtech? My favorite thing about Comtech is probably just um, making videos with my classmates. I think it's really fun to interact with um, everyone and to be really creative with the ideas and just make your own prompt about uh, whatever you want to do and just make it into something fun. Kayla? Um, I would have to say my favorite thing about ComTech is working in the studio, like working behind the scenes on like audio and switcher and like being a director. So. Right. And quickly, what will you both be doing next year? I will be attending La Roche College in Pittsburgh and it partners up with filmmakers of Pittsburgh. Great. And I'm going to Albright College um, 
for music business and also double majoring in uh, communications. Excellent. Well, thanks to you both and good luck. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Chloe. And I'm Kayla. We're bringing you this month's Henfield Happenings. Chloe and Kayla were the first students to create a recap video for our new YouTube channel. You can go there yourself to see what the students have been working on, both in and out of the class. Just search YouTube for Hempfield Happenings. Or to look at their film work, check out HSDTV7. Now, here's Matt Binder with another member of the senior class. I want to be in, in WCMS because I just like trying out new things and going for new This is Sarah Garcia's seventh grade audition for WCMS at our middle school. And Sarah's another one of these students that I followed from the middle school up here to the high school. There she is interviewing Mr. Bolesky. So Sarah, why ComTech? Why did you stay involved in high school? Well, in middle school, I saw other people doing it, and I thought it was a great way to get involved into things since I was such, I was in a shell, and I wanted to get these qualities I saw with the other students. And, you know, through the years, it's just been, I'm so happy I got involved with it. Now, next year, you're not going to be in ComTech. You're going to <laughs> study something else. Where are you going, and what do you want to study? I'm going to Temple University to major in biology, and although I'll be in the medical field, I still want to apply media and film. Now, what's been your favorite part of being in the program? My favorite part has been growing with other people and learning from others and you know learning to do things outside the box and going out other places that I've never would have thought I've ever done. Okay. Now uh, the piece of work that we're going to show that Sarah did is on a fellow student of yours, Sarah yes. Geisler. We haven't shown this yet to the <laughs> school or even on Hempfield Happenings, but can you explain a little bit what happened to Sarah Geisler? Um, in the beginning of the, her senior year, she unfortunately got into a car accident and I would visit her and stuff like that and see how she was doing and I thought you know that was a great it would be a great story to tell other people. And I think it's a powerful story especially because of her recovery mm -hmm. over the last year so Sarah thanks again for yeah. all <laughs> your hard work and uh, you. here's your feature. In PA the minimum age for a teenager to start driving is at 16. In 2010, the University of Michigan reported an estimate of 46% of 17-year-olds had a driver's license. Not only is there a large amount of teenage drivers, teen drivers are three times more likely to get into a car accident than adults. Here on State Road, Hemfield senior Sarah Geisler was involved in a serious car accident. Uh, Kim was uh, trying to uh, text her a couple times just to you know, say, hey, you know what time you're plan on coming home and, and things like that because she was going to go out to eat. Yeah, uh, we were, I was talking to him about, you know, I've texted Sarah, but I haven't gotten a response, which is unusual. My phone starts ringing, so I answer it, and it turns out there was, it was a, a gentleman on the other end introduced himself as an LGH chaplain. Said Sarah was in a severe car crash. She is in emergency surgery that we needed to get in there right away. So it was, it was scary, but at the same time, you just prayed because it was all in the Lord's hand at that point. Her brain was being pressed down, squeezing that. Once it gets down there and squeezes that off, all blood flow stops and the brain dies. So they knew they had moments, you know, within minutes to, to get that quickly done. Just God let her be okay. You can heal all things and, you know, you brought her to the hospital so you're not done with her. Because they didn't expect her to live. Um, they didn't expect her to make it to the hospital, didn't make her, expect her to make it off the operating table. Just eight months after the crash, Sarah has been recovering well and has gone a long way from where she initially was. How's your recovery process going? It's going pretty good. It's going pretty good. Therapy is good. Therapy I can get three times a week. What are the parts um, of your body that got hit? My leg and my hip and my clavicle and my my collarbone oh. and my head. Did it hurt a lot? Yeah. What hurt the most? My head. Do you miss coming to school? Yeah. Who do you miss the most? My friends. What was going on with your head though? Do you remember them? It was getting swollen and then we moved a bone flap to reduce the swelling to let it get out and go other places. What message do you want to tell the school about you? That they shouldn't get in an accident like me. 
because that's bad. So you're telling her to drive safer now? She's come a long way. Um, you know, she, she fights to, to progress every day, every therapy. She's pushing herself harder and harder. She, lo she loves being home. She loves going out. She loves having her friends over. Um, I don't really see her as being a Debbie Downer. I see her being the light and free-spirited Sarah. She, she has definitely uh, improved her, you know, her biggest thing was, man, she wants to go eat this, she wants to go here, she wants to go there, which I think was great. She has a very light and friendly and bubbly attitude to her and personality that just makes you feel happy when you're around her. You don't feel bad or feel sorry for what's happened. She's a very happy girl, no matter what's happened to her. The best moments were seeing her smile, you know, seeing her, you know, lick her lips. Seeing her, you know, look at you, focus on you, follow you, you know, uh, seeing her move her arms and actually give you a hug. Sarah has been improving day by day and is hoping to make a full recovery, get back to school and to her friends. For WHHS, I'm Sarah Garcia. That's all the time we have this month for Hemfield Happenings. Tune in next month when the students travel to Orlando, Florida and investigate some alternatives to our international drive. We hope to see you then.